Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kara, and today I'm going to be doing a book tag that I was tagged by the lovely Amelia, and this is the US TV shows book tag. So I will leave the questions down below as long as the people I'm tagging, Amelia's video, and link to the original creator who created this tag. So without further ado, let's get into it. Just got the questions here on my iPad, so if I'm looking down, that's why. So question one is Seinfeld. Famously described as a show about nothing. Name a book with little plot. Now, there was one book in particular that I wanted to put in there, but I don't have it anymore because I didn't actually buy it, I borrowed it. The book I could think of was Looking for Alaska by John Green. Really, all that happens in this book is Alaska goes missing and it's a journey for Miles to go find her. And win her heart, I guess. That's it. I actually don't know why I still have this book. I will never read this again. I read it when I was about 14 and sad and lonely, but I don't think I'll ever read this again. So this is number one. Number two, number two is a Friends. Ross and Rachel were the star couple of the 90s. They have a good book with a badly written or problematic romance. Now, the couple I had to choose for this was Hannah and Clay from 13 Reasons Why. Um, Everyone knows that Clay was just a bit of a, I don't know, just non, like, he didn't really listen, li like look and listen to all the signs that Hannah was giving to him. And Hannah was just me, 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 why is no one paying me attention but not giving any signs. And then in the end, it, you know, Clay was the one who apparently killed her and, not killed her, but like was her undoing, so. Clay and Hannah. Number three, The Office. This show thrives on the fact it has so many characters in a boring setting. Name a book with lots of characters or a book with a boring setting. Now this I, is a book I chose that I absolutely love, but I'm just thinking of how many characters are in a boring situation, and that is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Now, the, I don't think this book is boring at all, but there is like 20 kids stuck in the 1930s in a loop living day by day by day. Literally, for basically the whole book, they are stuck in the same day in the 1930s, reliving the day over and over and over, with nothing else changing, their clothes not changing, the food they eat not changing, nothing. And I can just imagine how boring that would be, so that's why I chose this for just a boring setting. Number four is Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Cops in Brooklyn being funny. Recommend a crime or thriller novel. Bonus points if the narrator is funny. The choice for this is The Live Tree by Frances Harding. This is about a girl called Faith who her father ends up murdered on the beach and everyone in the town thinks he commits suicide but Faith knows there's more to it. And when she finds The Live Tree, it tells a lie for every truth it tells a truth story for every lie that you kind of feed it or give to it. Um, and I absolutely love this book. It was something that someone recommended to me actually on one of my videos once. And I bought it for like $7 on Book Depository and it was so good. So if you like crime and mystery, this has quite a few twists in it too. Definitely check out The Light Tree. Number five is The Good Place. Four different types of people fighting a corrupt system, what could go wrong? Recommend a philosophical book, fiction or non-fiction. Alternatively, recommend a book with political intrigue. Now, if you haven't seen The Good Place, it is the most phenomenal show ever. I absolutely love The Good Place. It is so funny. Like, it's like only 20 minute episodes. They're so short. I wish it was longer. But the book I chose for this was Red Queen by Victoria Avard. I don't really read a lot of political books, but I thought in this, you know, Mayor is fighting the power of the reds and the silvers, she's trying to become someone who lets the silvers understand that the reds aren't like the poor people and whatnot. But if you haven't read the Red Queen series, you know I love this series so much. I rave about it all the time. If you haven't read it, check it out. If you love girl power, girls fun for what's right, a bit of romance and a lot of action, check out the Red Queen series. The four, four books have all been released now and there's a novella coming out in May, which I'm so excited for. Oh my god. Number six is Rick and Morty. Incredibly on the nose show that can both be watched casually and is very rewatchable. What's an easy read you can reread over and over? I forgot to get a book for this one. Hunger Games. I 
have always been a big fan of the Hunger Games series. Catching Fire is my favorite book, so if I had to read a book out of the series, I would definitely reread Catching Fire. I love the movies as well. Catching Fire is the best movie, let's be real. Um, but yeah, I love the Hunger Games series. While they are written for younger audience, I still love them and how like the story flows and everything. Katniss is just number one. Number seven is Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, a show which aims to help people improve their mental health. Recommend a book that has mental health representation done well. Um, the book I chose for this is Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven. This is about a girl called Libby who has spent her life being like the big girl and having her life kind of judged by every single person in her town. And when Jack, who is our other main character, meets Libby, he realizes that he knows who she was from years and years ago and he used to be one who would judge her and it just it focuses a real emphasis on how judging a book by its cover literally judging a book by its cover is something that can be so detrimental to a person's opinion and just outlook on life if you haven't read any of jennifer niven books i highly recommend it her other book all the bright places is actually being made into a movie this year and that is about a boy called violet a boy and that is about a boy called finch and a girl called violet and they just it's a, I mean he has depression and it's just how he deals with it while also having his romantic relationship and how it shows that love sometimes can't fix it all and it's a really great series but yeah any of Jen Jennifer Niven books I would choose and at number eight is How I Met Your Mother there's no way a show with this premise would satisfy everyone when it's ending name a book with an ending that flops now I'm going to choose a book that I was really really excited for and I just it was good, but I wish I didn't finish it. And that is The Beast's Heart by Leaf Life A. Shellcroft. I mean, this cover, like I'm keeping this book just for the cover, like my God. But this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but from the Beast's perspective. And I just found it, it was so slow. The story didn't really move that well. And then in the ending, there was such a build up for all these things to happen. And it just kind of was like, uh. So if you like Beauty and the Beast retelling, I mean, it's worth it, but it was very slow. It was 337 pages and it felt like 500, honestly. Um, but yeah, that's what I chose. I'm going to be tagging three people to do this tag. I'm going to be tagging Victoria, Kat and Sasha Reed, who I met off Instagram. So if you see this tag, make sure you check it out and do it if you'd like. If you guys haven't subscribed, hit that big red subscribe button down below. Hit the thumbs up button and let me know down below what is the favorite American TV show that you love. One that I absolutely love, as I said, is The Good Place, but I love This Is Us. It is brilliant. And I'll see you all in another video next week. Bye!